Hey everyone, Yevi here with the Inkwell, and today we're going to talk about not one, not two, not three, but four starter fountain pens. Why four? Well, I wanted to take a look and see what was available in the $20 to $30 range as far as fountain pens were concerned. There's a lot of competition there, and I wanted to get a good look at two of these staples in that price point, the Lamy Safari and the Pilot Metropolitan. But I also wanted to go ahead and take a look at two slightly overlooked brands, the Platinum Plaisir and the Nemosine Singularity. Now, before we get started, all four of these pens and two notebooks were provided to me at discount by Pen Chalet for this review. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing I want to talk about is packaging. And let's start with the simplistic and work our way up. So starting at $16, we've got the Platinum Plaisir. There's your packaging. A plastic sleeve and the pen. In the pen... It does come with a proprietary cartridge, which is fitted loosely when the pen comes in. So you just have to open it up, push the cartridge in, and it immediately spurts ink into the feed, which is pretty interesting. And it is a snap clip. So really cool there. Not really cool on the packaging now. Not a big fan. The other drawback to the Platinum Plaisir, if you do want to use bottled fountain pen ink, you do have to purchase the proprietary Platinum Converter separate. And that's going to run you about $6. Next up, we have the Pilot Metropolitan. It comes in a nice cardboard sleeve. Open it up. And that cardboard sleeve reveals a aluminum tin with plastic cover. And when the pen ships, it ships with, let's see if I can get it out. It ships with this Con 20 squeeze converter already installed in the pen. But the pen also comes with a proprietary pilot cartridge. So here's the cool thing. You get both the cartridge experience and the converter experience for $16. And there's quite a few different patterns to choose from as far as the pen is concerned. So you're not just stuck with like three or four colors. You've got about 10 or 12, which is pretty cool for that price range. The next one, we have the Nemocene Singularity. Pretty unassuming. It does come with a converter, which I'm still cleaning out because I had some noodler's ink in it and there was some staining, so that's still sitting in pen flush. But it also comes with four of these short standard international cartridges. And it has a very good box. I mean, it just has a simple slide with the instructions and the cartridges underneath those. I like the packaging. And for $25, not bad. You get cartridge and converter and a very substantial box. Last but not least, it is the Mummy Safari. Comes in a cardboard tube box and the pen just sits in the box attached to a sleeve. Um, actually, let me see if I can grab that really quick. It comes attached to this sleeve holding it in this box, which is it's actually pretty secure packaging. The other thing that the pen comes with, if I can get that slid out really quick. There we go. I saw the instructions try to come out too. When the, when the Lamy Safari ships, it ships with the proprietary cartridge already in the pen, but to keep the cartridge from accidentally seating and then getting ink everywhere, the pen comes shipped with that cardboard sleeve, keeping the body of the pen from screwing onto the section. So all you have to do when you get the pen is remove the cardboard sleeve, 
push the converter into the nib section and then screw it back together. Wait a couple seconds and begin writing. Pretty simple pen. The Lamy Safari is going to set you back about $27 to $37, um, depending on if you're getting a special edition or not, or if you're getting the current edition. But it also does come in a lot of colors. The only drawback at the $27 to $37 price point, no converter. It's, it's a good pen. It's, it's a workhorse, but there's no converter. So I do have to consider that a strike against it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at design. And for that, we're going to go ahead and go back to the Plazier. It's a simple design, uh, just standard medium, medium length. And as stated earlier, snap cap. The nib is really unassuming. There you have just a standard number five platinum nib. And this is in medium. It is friction fit, so you can remove it if you need to give it a deep clean. And the body is, yeah, it, it's, it's a lacquered either aluminum or plastic body. It's, it's not really substantial. But it feels nice. It doesn't feel slippery at all. I can get a good grip on it. And it's really lightweight. And I'm not going to lie. I like being able to see the inside of the feed like that, even though it looks kind of messy. I like that look. For a $16 pen, nice look. Now let's take a look. Okay, it was a little hard to cap there. But also, the other thing though, that is a stiff clip. I'm having to put a lot of pressure in to get that raised. So. Good body, stiff clip, have to order the converter separate, good pen. Now we go ahead and go to the Pilot Metropolitan, also a snap cap. And let's see if I can get that in focus. Here we have also medium nib, all of them are mediums, and standard steel Pilot nib here. Let me take a look at one thing. I'm going to be honest, I'm horrible with pilot nibs, so I have no clue what size this is. I'll probably put like a pop-up thing or whatever when I figure it out in post. But anyways, <clears throat> on each of the Metropolitans, let's see if I can get a good view here. It's a little bit of a dark pen, but you can see kind of the lizard print right above the section here, right above where the cap hits. Um, each of the pens comes with a colored body, a patterned portion here, and then the section. The section has a slight taper that you don't see in the plazier. And it's a good, it's a good taper. It provides a solid writing experience. Uh, the rest of the pen is, the, the cap is extremely heavy. The cap almost feels like it weighs as much as the rest of the pen, just being honest. Uh, so if you have this thing capped, it's going to be very top heavy. Now on the inside, just really simple construction. If it wasn't for the fact that this was a metal body, the fact that this section is all plastic would make me want to try to actually eyedropper it. As you can tell, I like to eyedropper a lot of things. That's just the way I am. And I'm not a big fan of the proprietary cartridges. Platinum has that strike against it. Pilot has that strike against it because it also requires a proprietary converter. And occasionally you lose those things. When you lose them, you have to replace them and that's more money. I get the economy behind it. It's just annoying as a consumer. Now, this one, easy. That, that is an easy snap action. I actually like that. Also, that clip is much easier to handle. So. If you're going to go off of looks and price, here, let's, let's get those a little bit better here for you. If you're going to go off of looks and price point, I'm going to be honest. Between these two, Metropolitan wins. It's got better packaging, better features, and I like the look and the feel a lot better. I think Pilot knocked it out of the park. And as far as looks go, it's not helping the plazier much. Now let's go ahead and step up into the $20 world. 
Now, for those that have seen my review on the Nemocene Singularity, I'll, I'll just keep this brief. It's a demonstrator look with the number six Yovo nib and the standard scroll work that you see on Nemocene nibs. And these are interchangeable. You can pick up a replacement nib at Penchley for $14.99. Plastic section with a little bit more of a dramatic taper than you see on the Pilot Metropolitan. The threads are on the section, which some people will consider that a strike against them. Some won't. Clear cap. We already talked about the spring there on the clip and the shape makes it a very good clip. And this pen comes with standard international cartridges and a standard international converter. So for $25, all good features, and it is a pretty smooth medium nib. Bringing that up to the Lummi Safari, the standard Lummi clip, which it's a stiff clip, but they make up for the stiffness in the shape. That little flange right there definitely helps make up for the fact that this is a very stiff clip. Um, now the cap just pops right off. Good pop action. And these are interchangeable nibs and the nibs are pretty cheap. I'll have to put the price up on the screen here because uh, I forgot to research beforehand. Um, but you can run the gamut from extra fine all the way up to a 1.9 millimeter stub. I used to have a uh, Lamy All-Star that had that 1.9 millimeter stub on it. And oh my goodness, that was a beautiful riding experience. Now, the one thing about the Lamy riding experience, take a look at that tapered section. That is to force you into this grip. It's not a bad thing, but if you don't like that grip or you do tend to grip differently, this pen may feel very awkward. And that could be a bad thing, but a couple cool features. You do have the ink window, the stamped Lamy look, which, like I said, I should have chosen a, a different color for this, but it is what it is. Oh, and of course, proprietary Lamy cartridge. Three out of four pens are proprietary. Still not a fan of that. And at that price point for this pen, then you have to go out on top of that and order yourself a converter. Not looking good. So if I had to pick personally in the $20 range between these two, I'm picking the Singularity. Just hands down, I'm picking the Singularity. I like, I actually like having, remember that thing I talked about in the Singularity video where I told you if you screwed something on a little too tight, it would do that? I'm glad I actually got that to happen in a video on accident. Anyways, though, aside from that, <laughs> I actually like having the screw cap compared to the snap caps. The snap caps sound cool, but the twist caps, because of the environment I tend to carry my pens in, is more secure, and I like that. I also like the features that this one comes with at the same price. And I like that this is just a standard tapered section instead of a section that forces you into a particular grip. So enough about the bodies of the pens, though. Let's actually take a look at how these nibs perform. And the good thing is, we're also getting to see how they perform with the stock cartridges because somebody, pointing fingers at myself, totally forgot to go out and get a converter for a certain Lamy pen. So I'm not going to have three pens use converters and one pen use cartridge in a review. That would just be bad form. It also means we get to take a look and see how the ink looks stock, which is pretty cool. So let me go ahead and redo the camera here for a second. And we'll go ahead and take a look at some writing samples. All right. So first up, we have the Platinum Plazier. Get that to focus for a second here. All right. Like I said, all four of these have medium nibs. So let's go ahead and take a look.
Okay. As you can tell from the writing sample, the stock ink that comes with the Platinum Plaisir, it's a very good black ink, works safe, and look right there, immediately after writing the sentence, tried to smear it, this is a good ink for right out of the box. Well, right out of the plastic sleeve anyways. I could take that to work and start writing with it. I don't know if I would use it on copy paper, which, by the way, I don't have any for the review. I'm sorry. But I'm okay with that performance. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Metro, which, once again, we got the Pilot Metro with the lizard print. And back to the paper. Okay. This time, as you can tell, the medium line on the Metropolitan is a lot tighter and a lot crisper than the medium line on the Plaisir. But the Pilot ink does not hold as well as the Platinum ink. So for this price point, if we're going strictly off of writing capability right out of the box, then I actually have to give it to the Plaisir. Because this pen was able to write a good line and a line that held up after just smearing it really quick, which is going to happen in a work environment. You're going to like rub your hand across the paper or heaven forbid, just spill some coffee on it. Which... You know, for an impromptu test there. Let's see. Let's get that in focus for a second here. Yeah, that was an impromptu coffee test. They both hold up really well. Um, Got to give it to them. On a dry smear, the Pilot Ink is a lot worse. But look at how they both held up to coffee. I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead, though and look at our $20 pens. And we're going to go ahead and start with the Singularity. By the way, riding around a tripod is very difficult. You should try it sometime. And now for the Lamy Safari. Here we go. Now, the first thing you're going to notice, the cartridge that ships with the Singularity is a black cartridge, and the cartridge that slips, <laughs> slips, ships with the Safari is blue. Now, looking at the two lines, they both hold up very well. There's very little dry smearing, and the mediums are actually pretty close to the same, which is what I'd like. So really, in this price range, 
in this price range, it comes down to taste. Do you want the look of the Lummi Safari? Or do you want the look of the Singularity? Which, by the way, that's a cool effect looking at the writing underneath. Also, just for the fun of it, how do you two do? Okay. Let's go ahead and bring those into focus here. Ah, actually. Let's wipe those up really quick. And then bring them in the focus. Um, the Nemo Scene ink definitely does better. When it comes to the coffee, though, um, true, the top two didn't get as bad as the bottom. But I don't like the blue ink. The blue ink just does not hold up to the to the coffee. So let's go ahead, though, and take a look at how much of a different look we get on different paper. Cool. Paper underneath is dry, so we can use it. Now for this, we're just going to go ahead and do some basic writing. So... A ah, little bit of a skip. Proving I can finally spell the name right. Okay. There you have the performance of the medium nibs on Rhodia dot pad paper. Not bad performance at all. I mean, Rhodia dot pad is a pretty safe paper. Um, if you look a little closer, you're not really getting any feathering you're actually getting a pretty good, true indication of what the color is there. So, I like that look. The, the Rhodia paper does really well for these pens. Now, let's go ahead and take a step up to Claire Fontaine. Well, step in any direction. I guess it's up to you. Now, these are not top-over notebooks like the Rhodia ones. These are standard notebook-style notebooks, so... Open it up, lined paper. Okay. I don't know what it is about the singularity, but I am going to constantly be misspelling Nemo saying that, and I have no clue why. And then we have the Lummi Safari. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at those. 
once again. Let me see if I can get that a little bit closer. There we go. So no real feathering, no real bleed issues, and the color, for the most part, is pretty good. I, I have to say that I actually like the way this notebook held up. So let's go ahead and though, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at pocket notebooks. So there's two pocket notebooks right now that I'm currently using. And one of those is the Unobtainium notebook from Elemental Paper. And there we go. Brand new notebook and brand new page. There we go. Well, let's get a closer look there. Now, you can see there's just some slight feathering. Let's, let's really get in on that. You can see there's slight feathering on the pilot ink. Just a little on the Nemocene ink. The Lamy ink held up pretty well, as did the Platinum. And honestly, the Nemocene ink handled pretty well as well. But that Pilot ink, man, feathering on this 100 GSM notebook, that's, that's kind of interesting. Also, since we've been talking for a few seconds, let's say, let's get that focused back in here. That's after a few seconds. I'll, I'll give all four inks credit there for a smear test after a few seconds, not even doing any kind of smearing there. I'm happy with that. Now, give me one second. I've got to go over and grab two other pocket notebooks. I'll be right back. Okay. Next pocket notebook up for size here. We have my remnants of my Rhodia.pad pocket notebook. Start off with the Lamy. Head on over to the Platinum. Move over to the Pilot. And finish up strong with the Nemosane. Okay. Now for this pocket notebook, it's going to hold up much like its big brother. No feathering. No issues. True color. Good pocket notebook. It's like $2 and some change. This one you can get in a three pack for, what is it? Three pack for $10. And I really like the material there. So shout out to Elemental Notebooks, uh, Elemental Paper. Still loving those notebooks. Now, for a brand everyone knows. Let's go ahead and... I actually already did this one earlier, so I'm not going to write it out. Let's go ahead and get that zoomed in. And fold that over here. So there we have... Pilot Metro, Platinum Plazier, Nemocene Singularity, 
and the Lamy Safari. And there you go, 60 pound paper. All the inks held up really well here as well. So where does this take us? At the end of the day, if you've only got $30, then obviously if you want to get pens and paper, these two are out. If you've got $40 to spend, these two are in. So let's take a look at the sub 30 really quick. If I'm going to put together something for sub 30 that I want to get, both of these are really good candidates. You can get a pen for $15, $16. You can get either a couple of these at $5 and some change a piece or get yourself some of these for $5 and some change a piece and still be in really good shape. Um, Claire Fontaine and Rodia make really good paper. And that's going to put you in the ballpark of about $20. And you still have the option to go get some like Monteverde ink or some Krishna ink, you know, fountain pen ink that's in like the $8 to $10 range. That's actually still very good. If you want to spend a little bit more and you can spend a little bit more, then if you've got like $40 to spend, then you can get yourself a Lamy Safari or you can get yourself a Singularity. Now, here's the one thing, though. This is where it comes down to choices. If you go with the Safari, you'll have enough money to get a notebook. If you go with the Singularity, because it already comes with a converter, you can still pick up a $5 notebook and still pick up a bottle of ink and still make the $40 range. Or if you don't want to carry around a big notebook, you can get both of these pens and either no ink and a packet of pocket notebooks of some variety, or bottled ink, and, uh, no, because then the pocket notebooks would drive you over. But you could get a couple ink samples in the pocket notebooks. So I guess at the end of the video, I have to come to some kind of conclusion. If I'm going to rank these four, how am I going to rank them? Well, at the top, and kind of not surprising, I'm going to put the Metropolitan. I like this pen. Let me get that in focus. I like this pen. I like this look. It's simple, it's elegant, and it writes well. And to be honest, that medium nib has kind of a fine line to it, which also appeals to me as a user. Second, we're going with the Nemocene Singularity. You already know what I like about that pen. And I want, I, I want a pen where I can get a demonstrator look like that, have a converter, and still have a good nib on it. I like that. But it's not to the workhorse level that I'm going to put the Pilot. Um, also, the price point on the Pilot makes it very hard to beat. Now... Between these two, that is a hard one to decide. And it really is for a couple reasons. On one hand, with this one, the drawbacks are a clip that takes an act of Congress to get undone. And the fact that you have to go out and purchase a converter. Also, come on, let's be honest. Not the best packaging. But it's a $16 pen. Then you have the Lamy Safari. It's a nice looking pen. It's a lightweight pen. The blue ink that comes with it, if it was black ink, I'd probably like it better. But the blue ink is not bad. And it does come in a better package. But like the Platinum Plazier, you have to go out and buy your own converter. And I can almost buy two Plaziers. I can buy one and three quarter Plaziers for the cost of one Safari. So for me, third place goes to the Plaziers. So if I have $40 to spend, 
I'm most likely going to get myself a Pilot Metro, a bottle of ink, and a pack of pocket notebooks. Why? Because I'm going to get a workhorse pen that's going to be able to handle being in a pocket. I'm going to get notebooks that can fit in the pocket. And I'm going to be getting a product that, yes, being superficial, comes in a very nice package. Because let's be honest, when your $15 pen comes in a package like this, you know the company actually cares about the product they're giving you. Now, all four of these pens can be purchased at penchelay.com. And while you're over there, don't forget to click on the radio podcast link at the top of the page and enter in Inkswell in the How You Heard About Us section. You can also find all the notebooks there as well. The only ones you can't find are Elemental Paper. Those you're going to have to find at elemental.backerkit.com until their website is up and running. Oh, one more thing. I totally forgot that you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at The Inked Well and find me at floor3media.com slash The Inked Well or The Inked Until next time, see you later. <laughs>